you're carrying a rival, a rival pen unconsciously. And these are things that you just don't notice. So you have to be mindful, especially if you're going for an interview. You know, be careful the kind of pen, pen that you're carrying. But um, I was going to say another thing too. Um, most times we have pens in our bag. Mm. Another bad habit is we tend to store pens that don't work. So sometimes you have three, four pens in your bag. You bring the first one out, it doesn't work. Second one out, it doesn't work. Discard them immediately. Don't no, put them back in your bag. Sometimes <laughs> you do, some people keep those pens because they have friends or colleagues who always go to their bags to collect pens. <laughs> <laughs> so, they keep those up. so when they collect one, two, they say, okay, your pens are not working. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it happens. You know, sometimes you keep pens. I, like, there was a time I opened up my drawer and I saw five pens. None of them were working. And I'm asking myself, what are you doing here? I need to throw them away. You know, unless they are pens that you can actually refill. You know, and there are different types of pens. You need to be mindful as well. Um, some people love the ink pen, you know, but they are specially to address envelopes. They are not for everyday writing because they do blotch, you know, if you're not careful. And they are for your fancy addressing, all right, the ink pens. They are not supposed to be for everyday writing. Um, and I'm talking about the, the real mm -hmm. ink pens. You have to be mindful <laughs> of those kind of pens. And another bad habit is, um, I guess it's, a, it's the way you grow up. So most times when they teach us handwriting, they teach us how to hold the pen. You still see some people clutching onto like the pen. Like Yes. <laughs> you know, or almost wanting to stab with the pen. And that's how they've grown up learning how to write. You know, but I guess to a large extent that's habitual and that's how they write. But it does affect your handwriting if you don't hold the pen properly. So you find now there are some companies that actually have built the pen in a way that the child can hold the pen in the most comfortable way to teach them, to guide them how to write. And that makes a lot of sense, you know. Um, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you need to hold the pen properly in order for you to write. Now, gone are the days when cursive handwriting, um, we don't see that much anymore. Mm -hmm. My father's handwriting is like, wow, daddy, how did you... And those are the days they taught them how to write nicely. But today... A lot of the way people write roughly is simply because they don't hold the pen well. And if you don't hold the pen well, you're not going to write very well. Or you're very nonchalant about how, you're, how you communicate, you know. But in creating a positive image with a pen, you, number one, you must always carry a pen. It sabotages your image when you see somebody like, okay, why don't you have a pen on you? You no ideally you should have a pen on you. Either way, because you're going to make... You're going to use a pen at, at some point, point, point in time. Yeah. So you should always have a pen in, in creating your positive image. All right. In creating your positive image too, never use a colored ink pen to sign. Because some documents, like, so you want to sign a check or you want to sign an important professional, important document. Don't use colored ink, red, yellow, green. Some people say they want to stand out, so they use green or something. In some places, they do not accept colored ink. In some places, when you want to fill a form, it's specifically black. Black, yeah. You see? So sometimes if you're carrying a pen, try to have both colors, black and blue, on you at all times, okay? Um, also, don't keep someone else's pen because they will always remember you. You've taken that pen, that person will remember you for something <laughs> bad and not good, okay? Um, then some of the do's, again, you know, um, again, I mentioned before, having your own pen making sure that you carry a pen on you, making sure that you don't ask other people for their pen when ideally you should have your own pen on you. Um, let the pen grow on you. So as you step up, um, increase your pen that you use. So you are going to see VIP clients. Just don't go there with one funny ink. Because um, you might not take this as significant but you don't know the people that you're talking to. And VIP clients, they look at everything about you, your entire package. So sometimes when you're going to see certain people, certain clients, always make sure that you, you bring out your, your best pen, so to say. So your best pen, you might not use it all the time. If you, you understand what I'm saying? You might just bring it out as and when you need it. Everything communicates because first impressions go a long way. Mm -hmm. And some people take all of those things into detail. As they're assessing you, they're assessing the small detail that you have taken for granted. So your pen, you're bringing out your pen to sign or to address anything, they're assessing you. So, and even if in this culture it's not significant, in other cultures it's very significant. So sometimes you don't want to take little things like that for so granted. So question, uh, in this day, in this digital age where most people go around with their iPads mm. or, or phones, what's the point of carrying a pen? That's what someone would ask you. I mean, I don't need a pen. I can well, always... 
take my contracts note. need signatures and I'm talking about in the business world, in the professional world, where you need to sign an MOU, you need to sign a legal document, you need to append your signature, you need to approve. Most of the contracts that we see around us, they need signatures appended. So your pen, whether you like it or not, no matter how digitalized we are going to be in this environment, we're always going to need our pen. Okay. <laughs> At that point, let's take a quick break. Okay. We'll come back to continue the tidy of this conversation about the pen. Don't go away. Welcome back. Janet's here. Closing moment to Janet. <laughs> Janet, pen. Yes. With Can you see pens. all my lovely pens? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sleek, smooth, slim, shiny, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Most times, when once you've noticed a pen and it makes your handwriting nice and smooth and always, you keep to that kind of pen, really. Or you always try to have that pen with you, even if you don't bring it all, all the time. You know, but... When it comes to pens, it all, everything communicates. It's all your image, you know. And it's not about whether it is red, black, or blue, anything. Most times, you know, you find some silver elements on your pen, all right? But again, with these pens, I have to say, which one would you pick? <laughs> I would go for... Ah, no. right. I'll go for, I'll go for the other one. You go for the red one? No, no. This one? Yes. Ah. Yes. So now, what makes you choose the right, the right pen? So you haven't used it, you haven't started writing with it. What would make you choose? I like pens that... So what, what is the image? What image do you see on these pens that make it sleek? Yes. It's sleek. It's, right. It looks light. It looks just comfortable. It looks light, yes. I just like the black and white combination. It, right, you know? okay. So, you, so that's exactly how picking pens are. It's about your personality. So you like this because it looks sleek and you like it light. You like this because it looks trendy. It looks smart. It looks nice. And you can imagine when you're writing with it and your posture and your position. Now, my question is, you put the pen in for men who mm. put in the jacket. Um, how do you prevent, you know, the ink going all over the place? And that's another thing about choosing the right type of pen. You know, you need to make sure it's a pen that doesn't always leak. There are some but pens that typically don't they leak. Have a you know, some of the cheaper pens, they typically leak. And because they don't have covers, they leak. Of course, if you want to buy a pen that is slightly cheaper, you're going to make sure that you buy one that has a cover. Okay, I did have one that here that had a cover, which is this. You always want to buy a pen that's got a cover, just in case there's a likelihood that it may leak. But very good pens Retractable are the ones that pen. actually, yeah, retractable. So when you want to use it, you bring it down. When you don't want to use it, you bring it up. And that's safer for you at any point in time, you know. And of course, there are pens where, as sleek as they are, when they finish, you can refill the ink. So those are nice pens as well, you know. Mm -hmm. But the quality of the ink matters a lot. And most times you will discover that when you begin to use certain pens, you know. But the, the whole idea about the pen is to ensure that um, you have your personal brand, okay. Buy a pen that you're comfortable with and that suits and, you. And holding the pen, sometimes yes. you forget mm -hmm. that, you know, for instance, the retractable ones, it, the tip is out. And then you go this way. Before you know it, you, you have actually scratched your dress yeah. and you have a long line. And unfortunately, some of them can't come out. Mm -hmm. You know, they really can't come so out. So you have, yeah, you need to be very mindful. The etiquette of using a pen is to be mindful of how you carry it and use it. So great. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you, you so Janet. much. Thank welcome. you, Janet. Okay. Uh, we've been speaking with etiquette. So now you coach. know. Yeah, I know. Now <laughs> <we> know. <laughs> so you can choose your pen wisely. Yes. Did they say pen is mightier than this sword? That's what that's <laughs> <laughs> thank okay, you so much welcome. Janet thank uh, we'll you. go on another break and we'll be back for the home stretch mm -hmm.